Good morning. morning. How's everybody doing? Having a good day? I hope so. Hey, if you're not aware, it has been a year that I've been here, and that's pretty wild. I can't believe it's been a year. Yeah. And it's been a really good year. And I just want to tell you, uh, first, I'm just so humbled and honored to be able to serve in this role. I can't believe this is what I do. I love everything about it. I love serving you in the way that I get to do. So thank you. Uh, Second, I want you to know that my family and I have just been unbelievably blessed by being a part of this church family. It's so good to be here and see our church just wrap their arms around people and love them. Not just us, but other people. You guys are so good at that. So just thank you. Thank you. And what we have seen so far is just the beginning. I love what's happening. I love seeing where we're going, but we have a long way to go, and I am so excited about where we're headed. And so before we get into the message today and kick off this new series, I just want to share a quick update with you. As I've stated over the last year, our vision and mission as a church is this, that we exist to call people to know, love, and serve Jesus Christ. That is what we do, and we are laser-focused on that vision, and in pursuit of that vision, we have been prayerfully developing a long-term plan for this church that we believe is aligned with God's call on us as a church, and this plan makes it possible to more effectively minister to our community while honoring our past but still looking ahead to the future, which we have to do. You know, RSCC has a long history in Rising Sun. It started in 1832, and for the last 200 years, this church has been passionately sharing the gospel and calling this community to the feet of Jesus. And a lot has changed over the years, but one thing has stayed the same. We want people to know Jesus. And over the last year, our commitment to that has allowed us, it's given us an opportunity to start looking ahead. This church is growing obviously. And that's amazing. But our facility isn't really that well prepared for that. You know, we've been blessed with this amazing campus, and we want to use it to honor God and call people to Jesus. And our long-term plan that achieves that, the whole goal is that we would be able to reach double the amount of people that we currently reach within our two services. We believe that's possible. I mean, last week was a great example of it. If you don't know, we had 620 people here on Easter. It was insane. But that's just the beginning. There's much more. Our reach is much bigger, and we long to achieve this goal that God has given us. And so we're making a plan. And I want you to understand that those numbers aren't arbitrary or just pulled out of thin air or just dreamed about. It's reality. We know it's possible. We saw it last week. And so in an effort to be good stewards of what we have, we are going to achieve this long-term plan without buying new land or building new buildings because we know we can achieve this goal with what we have if it's used properly and to its maximum potential. So with that in mind, a next big step is ready to be taken in that plan. So I want to share with you a letter that's going to go out to different community leaders over the next couple of weeks as we prepare for what is coming. So here's what the letter says. Dear coaches and community leaders, for the last 20 years, Rising Sun Church of Christ has been blessed to serve our community by offering the Family Life Center as a gym, gathering space, practice facility, and event space. The FLC edition was built by RSCC to use as an outreach tool by our church family into our community. And with the continued growth we've seen over the past year, our leadership team, along with the assistance of outside engineers and consultants, has been working on a master plan for RSCC. And this master plan includes goals for both the short and long term. However, the overarching goal is this, to call people to know, love, and serve Jesus Christ. Keeping this goal in mind, we have made the decision to begin transitioning the FLC into a permanent worship center. And this transition is set to begin May 31st, 2024, which means that the FLC gym will no longer be available as a gym space after this date. And the letter continues, this was not an easy decision. 
However, we have found it necessary to accommodate our growth while also striving to continue to share the good news of Jesus. So below are just a few of the reasons for our unified decision. And I want you to know, church family, that it is unified. It's unanimous. We wouldn't make this decision if there was any dissension in our leadership. But we are unified in it. So here are the reasons. Church attendance has doubled in the past year. I don't know if you're aware of that. It's doubled in the past year, and it's growing each week. And we are so excited about this in our leadership team in consultation with former elders and other strategic planners. We have prayerfully concluded that having a large gathering space for worship and other events like it is the best use of this facility. Second, our biggest service, the thing we do best for our community, is preaching the gospel. So to be more effective in achieving that goal, we need to maximize our worship space. And third, the analysis of our long-term master plan has led to this decision, among others, being made based on the best stewardship of our facilities and our funds available. So we're looking ahead to all the amazing things that God is calling us to as a church, but our goals with what we did with this building remain the same. We want to be partners with the school, champions of the family, and cheerleaders for our community. And we're confident that God has new and exciting opportunities for us to reach those who are far from God. Sincerely, the RSCC leadership team. Now, in addition to this, I want you to hear my heart as the church family and where we're headed. I want to share a few things with you. I've told you before that I am committed to honoring our past while looking ahead to the future, and that hasn't changed. While our facility will change to better accommodate our vision and the growth we're experiencing, our goal is that this place feels like home. So we're not abandoning who we are, but we are using the foundation that previous generations have given us in order to continue to welcome in as many as possible and to effectively take the gospel to our community. I mean, we're discussing some really fun and creative ways to bring some of our past into this room. A big thing that's already on the table that we're trying to figure out as fast as possible is how to get the baptistry in here. Because it's vital to what we do. We want to be able to celebrate baptisms in service because seeing life change is life changing. And we want it in here. So that's coming, but there's much, much more. So please stay tuned. It's very exciting. And the other thing I want to share with you is, I've said this a lot, and I want to reiterate it now. We do not just desire to grow in number. I don't care about that, and I've said that a bunch. What I care about is seeing lost people come home to Jesus. That's it. And that's what's happening. That's why we're growing. And because that is happening, because the Spirit is moving in this place, and we're all placing our trust in Jesus... We have to make room. What a blessing that is. What a good problem to have. And like I said, this was a very tough decision. We wrestled through it for a long, long time. But after a lot of prayer and counsel, we all agreed that this is the right decision. So if you want more details, we're an open book. You can ask any questions you want. If you want to know why this is such a good stewardship decision for us, please Reach out and ask. All of us, we would love to talk to you about it. Me specifically, I would be so excited to talk about where we're headed because it's really good, and I cannot wait. You know, I've pictured over and over again all the amazing things that will happen in this room, and I have prayed over this space. I can't wait to see weddings, ordinations, baptisms, to draw around each other in funerals as we grieve. I I cannot wait to see what's going to happen. I'm so excited. And in all of it, I want you to remember our vision. That we call people to know, love, and serve Jesus. That is the crux of everything. Making disciples is our number one goal, and we are so excited about where we're headed. So let's go together. Will you guys pray with me? Father, I'm so thankful that you have blessed us so richly. You have blessed us with great leadership over the years. You have blessed us by being in a great location in the middle of a great community. You've blessed us with strong vision that is faith-filled, and you have fulfilled your promises already in what you've called us to. And God, we, we surrender to you. 
And we just want to run after you. So God, get us out of the way so that you can shine, so that your, you can be made famous. God, we're, we are so thankful at the life change we've already seen, and we pray and long for more and more to come. And God, this morning I ask that you would pour through me the gift of preaching, that you would speak truth into our community, that you would unite us as a family, and that we would run arm in arm together after the mission you've given us. God, thank you so much for Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. All right, well, in any family, there are shared values. There are things that everyone in the family does naturally and that, that we all agree are just the right way. For example, in my house, in my family growing up, we cheered for IU and UC and the Reds and the Bengals. There were no questions asked. That's what we did. Everybody participated. But that also meant that we just inherently disliked Purdue, UK, the Cubs, and the Steelers. I'm sorry. That's just what it was. We didn't like them. And in the Rising Sun community, I've also found that we do something, we eat something really unique here. I don't know if you know what it is. Any guesses this thing that only we do, that we eat it? Oh, see, you're getting quiet because you're nervous. Farmer Brown, right? <laughs> Farmer Brown is ours. Nobody else has it. And I didn't know that. I thought everybody knew what it was. I thought every kid ate it every Thursday in school. I just assumed that. And then I moved to Kansas and talked to friends about Farmer Brown, and they thought I was crazy. I explained it to them, and they said, oh, shepherd's pie? No, not shepherd's pie. It's similar, but it's not the same. It's not, shepherd's pie is not dry enough. You've got to dry it out a little bit. <laughs> but we know what it is, right? And we all agree. It's amazing, and we eat it because it's good. But the point is that every family has shared values. We have something we unite around. Some call it family values. I have a friend who calls it their culture code. Some may call it traditions, but whatever you call it, these things matter. They're important. And as a church family, we have values that we stand on. We have things that we will not compromise, and those things inform all of our decisions and how we do what we do. You know, I looked up a definition of family values, and this is what I found. It said family values are beliefs, ethics, priorities, and worldviews shared by a family. So over the next six weeks, I plan on answering this question. As a family, as a church family, what are our values? What do we share? What do we stand on? What beliefs, ethics, priorities, and worldviews does Scripture call us to share? You know, the Bible defines all of these things for us, and our job as followers of Jesus is to submit to them and then ingrain them in our hearts so that they come out in our actions. So today we're going to start with what I believe is the foundation. Our first value is that we are a healthy family. This means that in everything we do, we are building spiritually healthy people, helping raise spiritually healthy children, supporting spiritually healthy marriage, and then all of that overflows into spiritually healthy families, which then makes us a spiritually healthy church that impacts our community. The truth is that as we grow together, that spiritual growth will pour out into our community and it can completely reshape life in Rising Sun. And we long that our community would be one that is completely surrendered to Jesus. But that starts with us as a church family leading the way. So how do we do that? There's some things we got to get our heads around. There's some things we have to understand about life as Jesus followers. First, we have to understand that healthy people, healthy individuals make healthy families. Okay, healthy people make healthy families. In order for a family to be healthy, the individuals who make up that family have to be healthy. So what does that mean for you? What does an individual who is spiritually healthy look like? What do they do? Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. 
A spiritually healthy person is someone who trusts God and does what he says. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 1, verse 9, he says, And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ. A spiritual, health, spiritually healthy person is someone who can discern right from wrong. Someone who understands the will of God in their life and they take steps to achieve the goals that God has given them in their life. You take big faith steps. You know, our commitment as a church, my commitment to you as your pastor, is to teach biblical truth. The reason we do this is so that you as an individual can know the heart of God. The more committed I am to teaching truth, the more you can know this God we serve. We want to create avenues that help you know him more because the more you know him, the more you trust him. And the more you trust him, the more you can discern what is right. And the more we allow the Holy Spirit to guide our thoughts and actions, the more we live like Jesus calls us to live. This is why gathering together on Sunday morning is so important. It's vital to the life of a Jesus follower. We gather as a family to hear the word of God and let it shape who we are. We come every Sunday and surrender our will to the will of God. And then we leave here together as a family knowing that we're not alone in what we're trying to achieve. That all of us are doing the same thing. And that's living for God's glory. And I want you to know that we are going to continue to develop more and more ways for you to grow as an individual. This is why we have things like the men's breakfast. So men can come together and sharpen one another as we pursue Jesus. It's the reason we have the women's Bible studies and the women's woven events so that our women can come together and deepen their faith in Jesus as they pursue Scripture. And I'm always looking for different ways to help each individual grow. That is our desire. And one resource I want to share with you that we use in our house, it's called the Chronological Bible. It's a simple Bible. What it does is it takes the events of Scripture and it puts them in chronological order. So it reads a little different, but it reads in order. It's weird how it makes it so exciting and engaging. And what we have done in our house, I think it's been for the last four or five years, is my wife wakes up every morning and she reads that day's reading in the chronological Bible. And then, because I don't like mornings, I get up and come downstairs later and we talk about it. And our whole family talks about it. It's a beautiful thing. It's changed our whole life because we start our day as a family talking about Scripture. I can't encourage you enough to do that. I know there are a handful of people who have already bought it and they've been on this journey that we've been on this year. It's so good. I can't stress it enough. Get a chronological Bible and start to engage deeply with Scripture. Second thing we have to understand about health in the church is that healthy marriage makes healthy families. Healthy marriage makes healthy families. We place a high value on marriage here. Biblical marriage is a beautiful and powerful thing. The marriage relationship is meant to model for us how Christ loves the church. A healthy marriage is one built on sacrifice understanding, servitude, commitment, and at the center of all of it is surrender to Jesus. That has to be the center of a marriage. The more committed we are to helping individuals grow in their knowledge and understanding of Scripture, the more committed we are to walking alongside one another and helping each other grow deeper, the more we will see healthy marriage. You know, Scripture calls us, the church, to foster and protect marriage. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, the Lord said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. And God made Eve so that Adam would have a partner, and the two became one. And this is the model for marriage. This is the gift that God gave to us in marriage. And then in Mark 10, Jesus says, Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. We follow that. We are committed to helping marriage succeed because the Bible tells us to. And this is why. When people see a husband love a wife and a wife love a husband, 
they see how Jesus loves us. Healthy marriage is one of our best tools for sharing the gospel. It's an evangelism tool. It's powerful. And so we protect it. Number three, healthy children make healthy families. We have to raise healthy children. And scripture is really clear that children are a blessing, but it's also clear that we as parents have a responsibility to lead our children to Jesus. That's why we as a church place such a high value on partnering with parents to help children know, love, and serve Jesus. We're following what scripture says. In Proverbs 22, maybe you've heard this verse before, it says, train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. That's true. In Deuteronomy verse 6, it challenges us. It says, these commandments that I give you today are to be written upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. It is, it's so important that we take raising children seriously. That's why we're committed to having such an amazing children's ministry. We want your children to feel seen and known. We want them to hear that Jesus loves them and he's calling them to live for him. We want your children to hear scripture and bury it in their hearts. We want to come alongside you as parents and equip you to raise children who know Jesus. And if all of those things are true, we find that healthy families make healthy churches. When we foster healthy families, when we become a healthy church, that's what happens. If we make sure families are healthy, that we're raising healthy children and protecting marriage and we're growing individuals deeper in their faith, our church will be healthy. And what's great about a healthy family is that it can expand. It can grow. It can make room to help others. Healthy families can do things like adopt and foster. Healthy families can reach out and support people in need, and the same is true for the church. When we are healthy as a church, we can grow. We can expand. We can make room. We can more readily receive people in need. We can more readily support those who are struggling. We can better counsel those who are broken. When we are a healthy church, we understand God's mission for us. And we commit to it. And we run after it. So what does a healthy church do? What does it look like? Matthew 28, 19. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. That's what we look, that's what we do. That is our mission. And we run after it. And then in Colossians chapter 3, it gives us the model for what church looks like. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That is what we do. That is who we are. That's why this gathering matters so much. When we have healthy people and we foster healthy marriages and we help raise healthy children, we end up with healthy families, which makes a healthy church. And then my favorite part of this whole thing, number five, a healthy church becomes a family. This is what's beautiful about the church. We become a family. I know Olive Garden says when you're here, you're family, but for us, it's true. When you're here, you are family. You belong here. When you give your life to Jesus, you become part of a family. It doesn't matter where you came from or what your past is like or what mistakes may have happened. You have been welcomed in. Paul says this in Romans 12, 5. He says, so in Christ, we who are many form one body and each member belongs to all the others. 
You are a necessary piece of the puzzle. You belong. You are a part of the family. And just like a family works to be united, just like a family creates traditions, just like a family lifts each other up when life gets difficult, so does the church. We're here for one another. We're family. And lastly, a healthy church impacts their community. This is what we do. We can't avoid it. When we're healthy, there's no way to hide from it. We have to. It overflows. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 5, 14. I've shared this verse so many times this year, but it's the truth. You, church, are the light of the world. A city on a hill can't be hidden. Neither do people put a lamp under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. The church, you, are the light of the world. When we do life together as a family, and we commit to fulfilling the mission Jesus gave us to make disciples, we bring light into darkness. We show the world what hope looks like and things begin to change. I mean, we're already seeing it here in our community. So many this year have come to know Jesus because our church is becoming family. Let's keep going. There's so much darkness to overcome in our community. But the good news is that light always overcomes darkness. Always. I've shared this verse so much, I hope you have it memorized. If you don't yet, please do. John 1, 5. A light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. It can't. When we shine light into the darkness, light overcomes. Situations are changed. Hope is presented. People are lifted up out of their brokenness, and they find a home. They find freedom. We value healthy family because healthy family leads to a healthy church family. And a health, healthy church family changes the world. This is what we're striving for here. This is why we're making changes to expand what we can do because we are becoming a family. And a family grows. You become part of this family when you make Jesus Lord of your life. Jesus says that when you surrender to him, that we're, you're adopted in as sons and daughters of the king of all kings. He makes us connected. And I want to invite you, if you've never given your life to Jesus, come join the family. Let the darkness in your life be overcome by the light of Jesus. If you want to surrender to Jesus as Lord of your life for the first time and be baptized, become part of the family of God, you can come see me. I'll be down front as we sing. Join the family. Let the darkness be overcome by the light and find hope in Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for loving us the way you do. Thank you for giving us hope. Thank you for sending the light that is Jesus to overcome the darkness that is sin. And God, I pray that this church family would continue to draw closer to one another, to unite, to lift each other up, and to welcome more and more people in, to grow because families grow. God, I pray that our DNA is one of surrender, that we are just running as hard as we can after you. We're laying our wills aside for your will all the time. And it would overtake our community. And we would become a community marked by eternal hope. Thank you for Jesus who makes all of it possible. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.